Good evening and welcome to the March 10, 2022 um, meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. I'm Tim Hilchey, the chair of the committee, and um, I'm going to read a little bit of boilerplate here. Meeting is normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order superseding, uh, suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. MGL chapter 38, section 20. <clears throat> this is uh, going to <clears throat> be updated for the next meeting if we don't have hybrid or, or meet in person. Um, now I'm gonna just take a roll call of the committee members. Ben Benson. Here. Annalee Wolfcole. Present. Lily Dwight. I am here. Alan Swedland. Here. Tim Hilchey present. <laughs> All right, we have a quorum. So I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.42 PM. And um, I'd like to remind people that our, we have meeting guidelines, speak one at a time after being recognized by the chair, follow the Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, and please be concise and non-repetitive. Um, so, um, this evening we're going to be talking about the applications that we've received by the March 1 deadline. And um, before I start this, does anyone have a thought about which one we should take first? Alan? Um, I, I, if it uh, pleases the uh, committee, I, I think that it might make sense to do the bigger proposals earlier, partly because of the uh, people who are in, the, in attendance and might have questions. And um, also because they might take a little more time in deliberation. Annalee Wolfkoe. Thank you. Before we get started, maybe we should uh, conclude that discussion about what we're doing about uh, conflict of interest. Okay, so we had a beginning discussion, Alan, while you were not plugged in. Um, the question was raised, if somebody, for instance, let's use Ben Benson, um, he has worked on the town common committee, should he speak about this issue and just not vote? Um, or it, do you feel that there are any ethical issues uh, that, that are in the ethics guidelines that would preclude him from voting? Um. We have to, we have looked at this issue before in the past, and <clears throat> I think that uh, it was uh, also with some uh, feedback from the state uh, legal side and also from town council that <clears throat> if a person is uh, a member on the committee when a proposal comes before it, it is uh, fine for them to speak, and uh, they should uh, probably. Uh, it, it's pretty clear that there's no personal financial interest of uh, Ben on this kind of a proposal. So it's not really a, a kind of a serious ethical issue at all, but um, it's oftentimes thought that it probably is better for just people realizing that we're really trying to do the best thing possible that he uh, recuses himself from the vote. So that's how we've done it in the past, but. Uh, I don't think we're in great je jeopardy, probably even if he did vote, but I don't think it'll be necessary. That's the benefit of having a former chairman still on the committee. But it's what you thought anyhow, Tim, so I'm glad to hear it from both of you. <laughs> um, anyone else uh, in the committee have a need to discuss this? Are we all good? All right, so um, <clears throat> then, I want to make one slight counter proposal to Alan um, and just see what other people think. Um, there's one proposal here for $800. And it is, um, my, in my review of it, it's a pretty straightforward proposal. Um, it's well documented. It's the type of thing the committee has done before. Um, what we could do is, um, let uh, Jean Solinsky, who I think is here to speak about this, and perhaps John Nove, 
give them the option of either staying on and hearing this discussion or because I think their their applications in good shape, um, maybe let them come to the next meeting. Um, what do people think about that, um, members? That makes a lot of sense. Do you have any, uh, go ahead, Lily. I was gonna say, basically say the same thing, give them the choice of, I think go first or schedule them specifically for the next meeting. Because I do think that we're not going to get through everything tonight because they're big ones. And I do agree that the bigger ones need some attention. So um. I'm, I'm happy, uh, <clears throat> Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, go ahead with the, uh, with the proposal from PVMA, uh, because I think it is, as you say, quite straightforward and uh, a clean, uh, well-documented proposal. <clears throat> Um, so, um, do we want to have them speak briefly about this and then, uh, see if we can, you know, conclude this by, um, before seven o'clock? Sure. I do have a couple of questions just to, just to Good. warn you. But yes. All right. So, um, if Gene Solinsky would like to talk briefly about this, um, proposal. Sure. Hello. Thank you. Um, it's nice to meet all of you, even though we're not in person. So would you like me to give a brief summary? Yeah, I mean, brief. <laughs> <laughs> Very brief. Okay. So I'm asking for money to um, repair and conserve 58 account books in the PVMA, PVMA library. So that was really brief. <laughs> be hard to beat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so questions. These are some pictures of what they're trying to do. So Lily Dwight, please. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I have just a, a few questions. One is um, on number 12, how does the proposal meet requirements for disability accessibility? And you addressed the physical access of a handicap ramp, but if we're talking about books, um, are, is there a plan to scan them for, and you're frozen in my world, did she go away? Oh, no, there you are, okay. Is there a plan to scan them or um, make them, make the books themselves accessible? Yes, I do want to digitize them um, after they get conserved. And especially now with the American Centuries website um, that's undergoing a revamp and a refresh, um, they're looking for new content. So this is definitely a group that I would put on there. Um, it's one of my top priorities, so yes. Thank you. Um, another question I noticed in that really wonderful piece that you attached about when they decided that books count as mm -hmm. uh, things to be preserved. It talked about storage and that the storage should be considered a part of the application to be addressed. And I was just wondering, you don't, you don't actually talk about it, but can you talk a little bit about <clears throat> how these things will be stored or how they are stored now and will continue to be stored? Um, yes, they'll, most of them will get new boxes and um, they'll also, so all of them will be boxed on a shelf um, in the manuscripts room that does have an alarm on it. So it's a secured environment. And we also have data loggers um, in, in all areas of the library that monitor the temperature and humidity. So we are doing that. Okay, thank you. Those were my whopping questions. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay, that was pretty easy. <laughs> Anna, please. Yes. Thank you. Just follow up with the digitalization. This is a rather minor um, request that you have, and I'm wondering when the plans are for digitalizing. I'm sure that that's more expensive and more involved, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, when can we see you back? <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully sometime next year. Um, as I said, they first need to get repaired. Um, since they are volumes, I would need a special piece of equipment and overhead scanner. And that's something that we are starting to look at. Maybe not purchasing one because they are so prohibitively expensive, but maybe leasing one for a year and doing a lot of scanning that way. 
So hopefully next year, that's what I'm eyeing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dan, Alan, Sweetland. Uh, yeah, just, just uh, one quick follow-up because I think mm -hmm. this is really a, <clears throat> an excellent idea to uh, have them digitized. And I have, I have not checked recently, but the last time I checked and that this issue came up, um, CPA uh, Act funding does not allow for digitizing of historic records, which is super un unfortunate, but it really was because of a justification of the, the importance of preserving the historic documents themselves. So mm -hmm. I think that's something maybe we should look into because I certainly would be supportive if the uh, Commonwealth uh, agreed that this would be uh, possible through CPA funding. So uh, that's all. <clears throat> Yeah, and I, I have, a, I will put it on my list of things to talk to Stuart Saginaw at the Community Preservation Coalition to see if there's been a change in that ruling. Because it does make sense why you're doing restoration to also scan, scan, because then you can let people look at the scan versions and they don't have to physically touch the documents as much. Yeah. Um, many people don't really need to touch the physical document. Lily? But yes, also, I mean, to go back to my original part of the question is, there is a question about accessibility, right? And so if we're asking people to address accessibility and we're talking about manuscripts, accessibility of manuscripts means to people who, you know, can't read. And it, but also the physical access as in like the ramp, the wheelchair ramp and stuff too. So I think that that might be a good way to hinge that uh, question if you, <laughs> If we're asking about accessibility, we need to support it as well. So. Ben Benson. Uh, just a quick thought. I mean, as far as the repair and preservation is fine. If they need be, can they just modify the application and take any references to digitizing out and come back to us when we get clearer on that issue? Um, if I understood, Gene, Gene, you can clarify this for me, but I understood you to say that this money is just for the physical restoration. Yes, correct. Yeah. It shouldn't um, be a problem for us to address that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything from anybody attending who would like to ask any questions about this? Um, do the committee members think they've discuss this particular item enough so that we can entertain a motion. Um, I move Alan, that we approve the application for $800 by PVMA for the preservation of the documents of the Ware and Williams families. And that's to recommend it to town meeting? Rec to recommend, yeah, we approve the recommendation to town meeting. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> A second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, um, I will do a roll call. Ben Benson. Yes. Lily Dwight. You betcha. Alan Swedland. Yes. Ann Lee Wolfkull. Yes. Tim Helche, yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Jean. It was very quick and efficient. <laughs> thank you. All right. Uh, you can sit sit in and listen to the conversation or go about your life. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll say good night for now. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good night. Bye. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Since uh, <clears throat> I think there's nobody here to speak for the um, for the agricultural preservation restriction, so we don't have to worry about that one tonight. Um, and then we'll go into the order in which these things were on the list. Excuse me, uh, 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 yep. uh, Tim, could we just, um, this, this proposal has some real issues and I think it, it would have to be amended even to be considered. Um, which one are you speaking about? The, the uh, pres farm, farmland preservation. Okay. Isn't that what you were just mentioning? Yeah, I was saying that there's nobody here to speak for it tonight. Yeah. Well, it's, um, I, th I think it's actually, it, it's not possible for the person whose land it is to actually make the proposal. Yeah, well, I, I think last year the Fisk people did do it, but they, I think 
what we need to do is, I think the select board voted on this last night and they voted to approve doing it. So we may need to amend the, the language to have the select board be the person. Is that what you're suggesting or you yeah. have some other idea or? Well, there's no, there's no um, documentation from the Commonwealth that this has even been approved. What, is there? Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, it's part of the application. It's. I went through it today and I didn't. Well, see what that. happened was, um, I think that the town clerk that oversees this project, she oh. omitted 50 pages of the document. Oh, oh it's all okay. pictures so like this. There's supporting letters from the appraisal report. So, but I didn't see a copy of it in the box either. Exactly. Uh, and I, I asked for it to be printed out, but uh, it wasn't. So what I'll do is um, I'll send the supporting documents that I received from the state to everyone. And let's set this one aside and talk about it next week. Very you'll, good. you'll email them, right? Email them. Yes, they're Thank all electronic. You. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. But good points. I, I, I didn't realize you know, what you were lacking. <laughs> All right. Um, so the next one up, um, and we've discussed this with, uh, with this uh, Kate Lawless, but uh, we'll, we'll uh, if everyone agrees, we'll take up the uh, town common rehabilitation. And um, I would ask, uh, Kate, if there have been any substantive changes from the plans and so forth since you last spoke to the committee? Um, well, I just should let you know that the, the um, plan that I sent to you this afternoon, um, in addition to the um, application language, that was an earlier draft. So both the are, you know, what I sent to you, Tim, just um, for use during this meeting, that was actually, we edited it before we printed it to submit. So that's just an earlier draft, just FYI, um, in case you were gonna look at that. Um, but the plans, um, you mean, is what we submitted to the committee, the plan that we're proposing? I, I wasn't saying specifically is the, the drawings that you've given us, obviously you've just told us that they're, they're not the latest drawings. So what I'm gonna do is share the screen and I'm going to call up the cost analysis. That you those both are the right things, those are fine. Right, so um, I, I think this would be good for folks to see. Is everybody able to see this? Yeah. You're, um and should i make it larger a little or is it legible? No, just scroll down a little bit maybe yeah. yeah so can you just briefly talk about this uh uh cost estimate and and then i have a question about the final figure and then the the uh the size of the request sure um, so this um, budget estimate was prepared by um, Berkshire Design Group after kind of considering what we brought to them um, as the plan. Um, there are, you know, numbers for all sorts of, you know, demolition and um, replacement construction costs, utilities, um, you know, moving of signs, kind of, they tried to just imagine if we were gonna go ahead with the plan that we have, what were the costs? And these are the costs. I would say there is one uh, item that is not on this list that we did let them know that we would be interested in do, you, doing, and that is um, having in-ground um, irrigation, like drip irrigation that would, you know, preclude the need for people to be watering. Um, and that, that area is, happens to be a very sunny location uh, and it really does need a drip irrigation system. So that is not included in this estimate that he said it would be roughly $10,000. So if you can imagine now 296 is now 306. 
Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I, I wonder if your question is, the number here is 296, but you're asking for 350. Is that what you're going to ask for? Um, I think this was a conservative estimate. Um, and it was based, it was prepared three years ago in 2018. So um, I think our committee just wanted to build in some paddings um, in case costs have risen and, and to have kind of a contingency. I think there is even a contingency built into this, but now we're, you know, going back four years actually. So um, I think we all felt like if we ask for 350, if we have to give some back, that's, it's better than having to, you know, go back to the well again. Okay, um, I'm gonna <clears throat> open it up to committee members. Do, do you wanna see any, uh, any other parts of this on a shared screen or do you, if you've seen enough of this document that I can just go back to the regular screen? Or does anyone have specific questions about, since we know this is an outdated estimate? Right, I mean, my, my question was that, that I wrote on here is like, is a 15% contingency enough? And now that I know that the numbers are a couple of years old, I, I can see that that would be a concern about um, the cost of labor and materials at all. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, a 15% con contingency for, uh, well, this is an outdated thing, but I just did a quick multiplication of this, this old estimate of 300,000 and it works out to about 345,000 if you have a 15% overage, um, but. Well, the contingency is built into the, this here, the number into the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're saying that this, four-year-old yeah. thing has a, has a contingency built in, so. But it's, say, it but it's a contingency based on four-year-old numbers. That's what right. I'm saying. So my yeah. concern will be that. Right. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I didn't read that contingency thing there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It's already built in. And I think their OMP, well, <clears throat> if their OMP stays at 15%, right? Uh, but the subtotal is going to be higher because of material cost. And um, so I think that they're going to be more than 34K for their OMP, never mind the materials and stuff. So I think that um, it's a concern about what will the real cost be. And I just don't know what the numbers are on these things right now. Right. So I'm wondering if Kate, it would be possible for Berkshire Design to um, get better numbers for you because what happens if it's more than 350? What are you going to do? Stop in the middle, have to come back for emergency? I mean, that's a concern, right? Well, actually, <laughs> this was in my head. I was thinking this was 2018, but that was probably when we met with them the first time. I'm noticing at the top of the screen, it says 2021. 21. <laughs> so maybe I was wrong. I was wrong about that. Um, but still, things go up in a year. That was one year ago. Um, yeah. I would say that um, we have talked about other grant um, possibilities. And I think there is a grant if we need to shift the monuments slightly that is built into this budget, but there is, I know there is a veterans grant for moving memorials that we could um, apply for, as well as other kind of placemaking grants that um, I've learned about since uh, kind of the beginning of this process. So um, just to, to put that out there. Um, <clears throat> did I also hear discussion and the connecting community initiative meetings that there might be um, a way to apply some ARPA money from the Leary lot parking lot um, project toward some of the um, parts of this project. And is that something that's been discussed in any concrete way? Well, um, probably not beyond what we talked about in the CCI meeting, but we did include in our application that 
that could be a possibility as well as um, you know, free cash um, and another source that I can't remember off the top of my head. But we, you know, I think having Trevor on the committee where and I think he is kind of has a better idea of how town finances work, that he suggested that that could be a possibility as well if if um, you know we needed to find extra funds during this process. Would, um, I mean, I would imagine that Berkshire Design Group, they get these numbers and they just plug them in and that uh, if you could ask them to regenerate the numbers, I, I would think that they should be able to do that. And I, I just think it would be a good idea considering how everything has gone up. I mean, what's inflation was 7.9% they were saying. And um, that I think, um, I mean, because I think it's a wonderful project. I think it's exactly what CPC is for. I would hate to have it underfunded, uh, you know, overfunding. Yes, you're right. The money comes back or just doesn't get spent. But it would be awful to be 90% of the way through and then, you know, stalled yeah. after you guys have worked so hard on this. Well, that's a good point. If if we could amend our application with some new numbers, I'd you know happy to get that to you. Um, what are and um, Ben, are you're part of this, right? So I am. Um, bypass you, um, Alan. What are your thoughts on uh, the question of getting getting more up to date numbers? Yeah. Well, I think I think uh, yeah. 20, the fact that it is twenty twenty one, I I wasn't thinking it was um, all that bad, but uh, certainly we've seen in the last year some uh, pretty significant increases in uh, both labor and materials. So uh, I th I think it would be worthwhile at least to see what those numbers look like, and maybe we could. Um, Make a recommendation or a suggestion of what those numbers might look like to come before town meeting. I think um, I assume that um, Berkshire Design Group it will be a bidder. Is that safe to assume? I would think so. Yeah. So I think one of the things to keep in mind, and I'm I, I think you need to get authoritative answer to this, but um, this is a this is a town property. And in the, for the most part, we need, uh, I think to meet state law, we need, um, you know, an open bidding process. And um, that, that, that that's just something to keep into consideration. And I think that the number, the amount that is the number of dollars where that kicks in, I don't know what it is, but I know we've talked about this before in past meetings. So I wanna, I think you need to, at least be thinking about the fact that this may be having to go out to bid mm -hmm. and that uh, that would also, um, you know, I think of it, you're still safe with, with these numbers, but you should be thinking about how you might go about um, that if so long as, and if, since Trevor's on the committee, he's gonna know exactly uh, what to do about that. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, just in terms of uh, strategy and process, uh, do you know what the square footage of the common is? I don't know off the top of my head. Ben, do you know? From my committee no. The map, um, Kate, if we had the map, would that show it? I, I, did, I looked at it today and I didn't notice that it mentioned the exact square footage. Okay. Okay. It's we a beautiful we don't need map. To go over that, but, yeah, we don't need to take the time on that. But I, I just one thing I would alert you to in terms of presentation at the town meeting is that uh, particularly for us older folks in town, you know, when they see numbers like this and they say, what, how big is this, how big is the common? And then you tell them it's, you know, 2,500 2, square feet or something like that. They sort of ask, you know, well, how, how could that be possible? So I think you, you just need to be thinking a little bit of, I, I, I think the numbers are probably quite realistic. And so I'm not saying that you should be uh, critiquing the, the bid in any in, in any in anything respect uh, in that way, but I do think you're going to need to probably be prepared possibly for town meeting comments that you'll need to respond to, um, and 
sh just show them how realistic uh, this is. But I, I would certainly have Trevor uh, provide you all with um, some some of this information regarding the bidding process and anything else that needs to go on in that regard. Thank you, Alan. I like the project. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Berkshire Design Group does have uh, a number of other projects and they could get us that information pretty quickly, couldn't they, Kate? I believe so. Yeah, they're very responsive. And it would be, so maybe that to Alan's point, if you could get the cost per square foot, that, I mean, that will, of course. that yeah, will be involved. Thing. You never know. Right. It might be worse. I don't know, but you should be prepared because someone will ask, as Alan said. Yeah. Yeah, this, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of just taking a, a yeah, quick this, and, this... and dirty calculation. It's, it looks like the Sugarloaf Street dimension on this drawing. Does everyone see this drawing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 114 feet. And then the, the vertical is um, along this edge near Cheslick's, says 135 feet essentially. I multiplied by two and divided by half because if you think it's a square, yeah. so it's roughly in the ballpark of 8,000 8, feet. I'm adding some stuff because it's not a triangle and so forth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be good to know. And I'm sure that they must have calculated the square footage. Oh yeah, the yeah. I just didn't have my high school geometry book available. No, no. I, <laughs> One half base I, times height. Come on. Yeah. So, um, Ann Lee, do you have some ideas and thoughts, questions? Um, yes, my only thought. Um, I think it would be good to have more accurate estimate. Uh, so you don't get anything for nothing. And um, I don't think it's necessary for Berkshire Design to go through with a lot of the smaller numbers. As I was looking at this um, estimate, there's less than a dozen or about a dozen um, major items. And maybe if they could especially look at those and the others, if we had them just increase by 7.9% or 8%, that certainly would be adequate for me. And then the, yeah. the contingency Otherwise, in O&P. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of your process, if I got this within, you know, before your next meeting, I could submit it and, and amend our application. That would be okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I basically, we're here to help you try to get this into the correct form. And so that we've anticipated most of the questions that might come up at town meeting and uh, make sure that the numbers are realistic because we've had some numbers that weren't realistic and, um, and we're talking big dollars at this point, not, not so much on this project. It is still a lot of money, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a good three family, uh, three bedroom home for somebody. So, um, so it would be, yeah. And I think the, the application uh, season, I think our next meeting is supposed to be the 17th, which is St. Patty's day, but I'll have to check that and we'll decide that at the end of the night. But uh, I suspect that Berkshire can turn this around quickly. Um, so, Lily. So I have a kind of off the wall question, just to keep the evening interesting. Um, I was talking with someone about the fountain and the town common and all this sort of stuff. And I said, you know, I expressed my personal views on the aesthetics of that fountain. And I was informed that it was um, one of six fountains in Western Mass that was erected by the Women's Temperance Society oh. in, in order to you know, promote sobriety. And I was told, and I've been trying to find out if this is true, but that in the gifting of it to the town, there's a requirement that it does never, that is never turned off. I don't know if it's true, but I just thought I would raise that so that anybody, if you have any way of finding out, um, because I see that you have timed, you know, shutdown and seasonal and stuff, of course, that we would be deprived of our fantastic ice sculptures, but, um, 
But um, I just thought I would bring that up because apparently there's one in Florence and I think there's one in Athol and um, in, in a few different places. Anyway, I told you it was a weird one, um, but it might be worth looking into to understand if it really in the gifting it to the town. And, and is that still a requirement? Because if it is, maybe it's something the select board could annul or whatever you do with something like that. Well, thank you for that question. And actually, I know my committee member, fellow committee member Greg, uh, found a similar fountain right down the road, right in that other in the cemetery on the corner of what is it, South Long Plain Road? Long Plain Road. Am I saying that right, Greg? Um, South Main Street. South Main. It's in the cemetery off South Main Street as you're going up towards um, yeah Long Plain Road or actually it's um, at the intersection of, is it West Slayer Street, mm -hmm. that cemetery. Yeah. So is, that, is, is it where you turn to go the B and, B and A or? Yep. Yeah, okay. I can never remember the street name, but I, yeah. know, where, I know where the, the yeah. lunch spots are. <laughs> Food. Good chicken uh, cutlets. Um, right. But well, thank you for that, Lily. And I guess we'll have to look into that. I wonder, we'll have to find a town historian who, who might have some information about that. And might have an idea. <laughs> What's that? I was, one, I was and, wondering if John Nove, who's on, the, huh? on this meeting, has any idea. John? He's muted. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, Maybe he doesn't want to talk to us. Fran has her hand up, by the way. Yeah. OK. Um, I was not ready to open it up to the public, but I, I guess by talking to John, I'm opening it up to the public. So um, Fran, would you like to? Yes, I would. Uh, Fran York from Ward Avenue. And I am questioning the need for this big uh, overhaul of the town common to begin with. We're a small New England town. We're not a big city. The fountain has been that way forever. Um, and I don't know why you need to move the monuments. I, I would think that putting new walkways, a few new benches um, would be sufficient for the time being. We have a 19 plus million dollar sewer project People seem to think that we need a town park and um, people are talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars like it's pocket change, but it's not. When you're living on a, a fixed income, especially with inflation the way it is, I just don't see the need for all of this um, change at the, at the present time. I think that some of these projects could be put on hold for a couple of years and um, save the town, you know, save the seniors. I mean, obviously we have the senior center going in. I heard it said that the common would be a place where seniors could sit and listen to the birds and, um, you know, get together. Well, perhaps in the new senior center setting, a gazebo could be put there and some other area there to sit and listen to the birds and not have all the, uh, traffic in the center of town as well. So that's just my input on the project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fran, I just wanted to ask if you're aware of um, how CPC funding works and that the money that we're speaking about tonight is raised independently of your real estate taxes. And uh, it's a component of the real estate taxes in some way, but this money can't be spent on building a senior center, for instance. It can only be spent on certain projects like affordable housing or building a park or um, repairing a town common or um, buying open space. So this money has been raised already and it's sitting in the bank and it's not gonna change your real estate tax bill um, except if the valuation on your house goes up, uh, it will have an effect, but um, so it's not, it, it, we couldn't spend this money on, for instance, 
paying for the sewer. It's just right. not a, you know, it's money can't be spent that way according to state law. So I just wanted you to be aware that, um, you know, that's, that's a consideration, but I do understand, you, you know, the, the thought process you're bringing to us and we appreciate that. Well, I just think it's going to change the whole center of the town and it's not necessarily, I don't think we need something that elaborate. It seems like Deerfield is trying to become a, a city like Greenfield. I mean, Deerfield is trying to become a city like Greenfield did and we see what's happening in Greenfield and I would not want to see that happening here in this town. Well, yes, and I think, you know, you have a valid, valid opinion. And if we do recommend this to the committee uh, to, to annual town meeting, that you should definitely speak up about it at town meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your input. Um, is there any other thought uh, before we move on to another discussion about another project? Um, does anyone who's not a member of a particular, uh, Melissa, I'm not sure what, well, you're here representing, for instance. Hi, I'm here representing the town common committee. Oh, okay, so you're, <laughs> I'm you're very here. much in favor of it. I will just say I think this project has been worked on for like at least 10 years by various committee members, and I've only been on it for a couple of years, but this is the farthest we've ever gotten with the most concrete ideas. There's a lot of enthusiasm and support from the neighbors and the abutters and the businesses and um and I'm just really excited. I hope we're able to do some component of it in the next year, even if we have to break it into a, a couple of different smaller projects. But I really hope that it will get some funding and we can we can at least address some of the major safety concerns. Good. Thank you. Um, so now I'm just going to ask the, the committee members, um, are we at a place where we, we have decided that Kate's going to speak with Berkshire Design, get some new numbers, come back to us so we wouldn't be taking action on this tonight? That's uh, my understanding. Okay. Absolutely. Ben, Allen. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And is there anything else we think we should ask Kate to, to um, get for us for the next meeting? Or Greg or Melissa? Um, and if not, um, maybe if something comes to your mind after the meeting um, and you want to send, uh, send me a, a thought that I would pass along to the committee, um, I'd be happy to do that. Or you can send it directly to Kate. She's the chair of that committee. Um, any comments, thoughts? All right. So we, so would, we, would, we would make her... Um... So we would move her to the agenda for the next meeting then, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Before we make a recommendation on this, and if we have to have another meeting, I don't anticipate it with this project. It looks like it's pretty well documented and it's got years and years of study under its belt. Um, so, um, but I think that uh, that one big component is the, the cost estimate, which I think is important um, for us to, you know, for you to be able to be, as prepared as possible for town meeting. So, uh, <clears throat> so I guess that means that uh, we'll be notifying you when the next meeting is. We'll, we'll have determined that this evening. I think it's the 17th, but um, we will certainly reach out to all the applicants and let them know uh, after the meeting tonight. And um, we'll just roll over this agenda and put it under old business. Um, so <laughs> it will uh, be easy to do the agenda, at least for the next meeting. Um, so um, if no one else has any questions of Kate and, and the uh, town common committee, we can either, we can tell them they can go home uh, or if they're already home, I guess, uh, sign off or you're welcome to sit in and listen to the next discussion. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna All say right. good thing. Thanks, thanks, Greg. Thanks, thanks for thank you those numbers. All right. All right. So um, now the next thing I think we should talk about is the old grammar school project, because um, I know that uh, Julie has 
so many meetings during these upcoming weeks that you'd like to spend time with her family. So, <laughs> um, so Julie, yes, um, we. Is there anything new from when you came to us last uh, two weeks ago? I think. Um, there's a couple of new things. So um, Greg Franceschi's here. I don't know if you came for this discussion or not, but um, Greg and um, John Paturic and Peter Thomas walked around the building and looked at it for the immediate repairs piece um, and went inside and looked at the records that were stored and everything. Um, there are two things that we were looking at for immediate repairs. One is the brickwork and the other is water intrusion. Um, so John Paturic has since, I don't know if it was before or after, but um, met with a contractor who's going to provide us an estimate for the brickwork just to get it in place so that there's no further deterioration before we're able to do these repairs. Um, but that sort of you know, that, that's it. We have no estimate yet, but they've at least met with somebody who's going to give us an estimate and that'll give us a ballpark um, value for that brickwork. Um, and then on the water intrusion, um, Kevin Scarborough the, um, ha has been out sick for a while. Before he um, got sick, apparently he, there was some work done on stopping the water intrusion and we're a little unclear as to how much was done. So um, we're sort of waiting for it to rain again. Um, and um, they're gonna go back and, you know, if we have like really good solid rain, they're gonna go back immediately after and look and see if there is indeed water intrusion. Um, so the number, I'm feeling like we are nowhere near where the, um, the, the, the town common folks are. We don't have solid estimates for any of this stuff because we're really just starting into this project. Um, so we, we took that GRLA building assessment and looked at the immediate repair estimate they have and we just kind of used numbers out of that to guess, but it is very rough guess um, as to what would need to be done immediately to sort of sustain the building until the repairs can be done. Um, I don't know what else changed. Um, talk to Casey about what will have to happen if this is approved is that there will have to be a, a um, you know, like an RFP or something put out so that we can get um, designers to bid on doing the design. So the process of issuing that RFP, we're probably going to go to FERCOG to get that done. Um, and Casey gave me an estimate of $5,000 to get that administrative work of issuing the RFP. So that is a change, I think, from the last time that we talked. Um, and then Casey felt fairly strongly that people who do these, um, the, the packages, the, the design and engineering packages are really getting 10% of the total value. So that's an increase also from last time. So it's gone up to, so the estimate for the full repair is 4 million. That's based on the GRLA report. 10% of that is 400,000. I think we were at 375 or 350 or something before. And Casey felt pretty strongly that we should increase that to 400,000. Um, so that is the, I guess, story behind the increase in price from last time we talked to this time. Okay, well, that's, I'm just trying to get to the part of this that uh, has this sort of breakdown on it. Sorry, it's this. There's a lot of stuff in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's, a lot of, it's not the best. Uh, Jim, I, I have a couple of questions to ask about what Julie was speaking about, if that's all right yeah. to ask, to clarify. So Julie, um, I am looking at, unfortunately there's no page numbers. I guess I, I should, I don't think we did on senior housing either. Um, <laughs> but it it has um, the RFP for 5,000. It says drawings for 400,000. There you go. All right. And then immediate repair 70,000. Um, 
you were speaking just now about the the bricks and the water infiltration is that the immediate repairs for 70k that yep, you exactly yep okay cool and so the, we do indeed have the rfp rfq 5000 in there right yep um, so i think this said drawings and i'm like what it costs like six thousand bucks to generate a CAD drawing, right? Yeah, that, it's project management and stuff, right? It's the full right the package. It, so, um, and I know renovations are more expensive than a straight thing, but I went to like architectural municipal <laughs> building sites, and it seemed like they were saying that um, for this type of building that it should be 6.4%, but then with the renovation, you should add like 2%. So they were saying more like eight and a half percent instead of 10%. Oh, okay. um, we're probably safer saying 10%, but I think <coughs> that word from drawings to project, because it's project management, right? It is, yeah. Okay. So it's the full package. So yeah. it would be like, it would be the drawings, the engineering analysis, the, they would write the RFP for the contractors and then they would oversee the whole implementation. Okay. The project. So it, it would be, yeah, that entire thing. You're right. That word drawings is insufficient. Yeah. Oh, I was kind of like wigged out. I got to say, <laughs> it's like, I could, I'll draw. <laughs> Thank you. I can draw that. That was what I was trying to um, understand. So we, yeah. we would be suggesting something like um, architect, architectural design, engineering, and project management. And broken down. Yeah. I do not have a broken there. That's and, never happened. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, I mean, and I got to say, I don't know that. Everything I said, they just, they said, if you hire an architectural firm, that there'll be this percentage. Is, is there any chance, um, Julie, that, you, you know, on the front page of the application, but the statement is very clear that it says a detailed documented proposal for costs, including budget and professional estimates. And do you think that it's not possible for you to produce something like that for town meeting? I do not, no. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't think that that's possible. Um, here again, I think this is um, you know, a project I feel very um, favorable towards and, and, um, and I realize what, what you're saying, but you're gonna be asking the town to approve. Uh, and and it, so I'm coming off of the same place that uh, Lily was, is that it, you, you've gotta have some real documentation there and also some justification for why that number is what it is. That's going to protect us in terms of recommending, but it's also going to make it uh, more accessible and um, understandable to people who are going to be voting on this. And um, so I don't know, I don't know what to 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 tell you. I think um, what about the GL? What's the GLR? Whatever. GRLA. GRLA. Is there some way to? take that pretty detailed information that they provided and um, at least uh, upgrade it in a way that would be justifiable. Normally, I can tell you in the past, normally, and I think this partly depends on who's on the, on the uh, Community Preservation Committee, it, it used to be pretty hard-headed and I, I'm still of that gener generation, but we used to require professional bid to, for anything that would be of pretty substantial numbers. Um, you know, some, something that actually uh, gave us a good handle on, uh, okay, these people have really done their homework and they know, they know what those um, numbers should be approximately. <laughs> so I think it definitely, you um, not using drawings as a category, but mm -hmm. be quite specific about what it is that you're going to be trying to get in phase one, making it very clear that phase two is something that is not necessarily even going to, who knows whether that'll come before the Community Preservation Committee or not, but just I, I identify it as the, the kind of long-term plan for the overall project, because I think there again, uh, communicating in town meeting, it's very important that people don't see that 4 million project and 
have a, you know, it's confusing. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of stuff being voted on. And they see that number and they're saying, well, wait a minute, are we voting on $4 million here? Are we approving phase two or what's going on here? So it's really a matter of how you all communicate it um, at that point that's going to be, I think, very important. So my personally, I would not support this project if it were not either CPA funds or grant funding going to do the entire project. So that $4 million, I would not advocate for that to be paid for. The, 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 the appealing piece of this is that you can revamp this building using CPA funds and therefore not raise taxes. Um, once you revamp this building and move the um, town hall into it, that opens up the current town hall that can be used as a senior center if we are not able to get grant funding. So therefore, then we would have to use town funding to upgrade the current town hall, but it's a functional usable building right now. So you could go into this, do this project using CPA funds, not raise taxes, move the town hall in there, move the senior center into where the town hall is right now without raising taxes at all, right? That's the entire, that's the appealing piece about doing this. So I, like, I wouldn't even propose this if it weren't um, possible that CPA funding would be used to do the entire project, which is why we put that complete rehab in this, in this application. Um, it's so early in the process right now that we don't have any, you know, we have that GRLA report and that's kind of it, but that is nowhere near what we need to be able to have a dollar value for that complete rehabilitation. Um, you might, might be able to use, um, I, I think that is a way to kind of bump things to the point and, and sort of the detail that you you know I, I you can't just arbitrarily pick a number you, as I, as you well know for what is the engineering cost going to be or whatever but even just to list those things as what is going into that total first request for four hundred and seventy five and what I'm really talking about is I, I'm in support <laughs> with you I understand uh, exactly what could be down the road what I'm uh, more referring to is that. Um, when this is presented at town meeting, it had, really has to be abundantly clear that you're seeking funding strictly for phase one. And that you, uh, you, you, if you want to identify phase two and the larger project, I think you want to definitely uh, present that. But I, I think if you, I, I mean, you know, you're not going to be the only project that comes before CPA. Um, right. And you, uh, this time, so there's a lot of money going out this time. And also even in the future, who knows what the park might come down again. And, uh, you know, we, we, we sometimes, we can't anticipate what's going on. But I think there's, a, there's other ways to do a, a pieces of that funding and CPA will definitely part, be part of that phase two. I'm pretty confident that you're, you know, that that is the case. But I think in, as, as a matter of getting through this first phase, um, doing as much as you can to make it very clear, what are we asking for now? How is it going to be utilized or, or spent? What is, it, what is it for? I think the rehabilitation part is very important because if we don't restore and refurbish and save what we've got, um, this all becomes kind of moot on some level, uh, you know, before too long. Exactly. The building <laughs> falls down before we fix it up, we're done. <laughs> yeah. So we want to, hit. Yeah, I would say, you know, suggest that you really hit <laughs> that, that pretty hard. But um, they're, 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 as you know from the past, I mean, in town meeting, you can be uh, pretty shocked at how much detail sometimes people will want to get into yeah. um, when they start asking questions. So that's just a kind of a, Suggestion. Yeah. Anna Lee, um, and you can you can have a back and forth with Julie if that's the best. Thank you. That's okay. No, I <clears throat> really um, agree with Alan of us wanting to um, have the numbers as 
precise as we can. And I understand the, the uh, conundrum that Julie is in. And so I'm also almost wondering if recognizing that at times we have uh, an <coughs> town meeting if in fact the proposal for this town meeting could be for with some specific numbers for the immediate repairs and then in the meantime that would give just you know give a couple of months to be able to really firm up the um the ask and the details for the uh the design and the project management and whatnot so um but it, it does seem that we'd need to have more specifics for sure, rather than just the, the sort of the general and older estimates. Um, I'd just like to say one thing about the, the issues in phase one and where you know that all stands at the moment as, as best I can. Um, I did go um, do a walkthrough with John Pachorek and Peter Thomas um, last week and John met with a, um, a Mason to um, get some numbers for the water infiltration issues. The primary thing is we just don't want the mold issue to become worse in the short run and you know have that become a big nightmare because obviously it's already a problem, but it's, um, it's not that bad at this point. But the water infiltration thing is um, that the, the brick where the, it, the mortar in the brick needs to be repointed in many, many places around the building and the um, cement walkway that goes around the building has a lot of cracks in it where it was previously, you know, right up against the, the building. Um, they can clear out all those spaces and put in, you know, a side, the equivalent of sidewalk caulk and zip it all up so that basically nothing will get worse while we get the whole project together and figure out exactly, you know, what we're, asking for. Um, at this point, it's more about just trying to keep things from getting worse. Um, I don't know what those numbers are um, or whether John has them yet, but in terms of the water infiltration piece in phase one, I think John should be able to get those numbers within the next you know, week or so anyway. And um, I don't know whether we're, are we, are we required to get three quotes or just one to present it? Do, do any of you know that in terms of well, the I, process? I think it so long as people think think that it's authoritative and and not exact, but that it's there's something behind the numbers, you know. So in, in other words, a, qual a qualified person or or a company has um, has given given us some some rough numbers. That that should be sufficient, I think. But as I said, it, it you know, I think it's it's a judgment call about what what it is that. Um, I, I kind of liked Annalise's comment. I mean, I, I think uh, if you don't feel comfortable or confident that the 400,000 number can be well uh, documented and specified, uh, maybe uh, you want to think about um, getting that first refurbishment money now, which I think would pass. I think there's a strong support for that. And then be able to uh, get an estimate. I, I, I'm just speaking my own sense of things from the past. I don't, I'm not telling you to what to do or, or anything. I just, I just wonder if that's a, a kind of a, a route that you might want to consider anyway. Okay, well, I've um, been letting everyone else put in their two cents and now I'm going to just make some suggestions. Um, my thought when I, when I saw this was, um, basically that we're not ready at the moment for considering $4,475,000. We are ready to do the preliminary work for shoring up the building. And I think Corpita is the brick, is the mason that mm -hmm. we're speaking yep. about. He's one of the most experienced and he's worked on, you know, restoration projects, et cetera. Um, so his estimates of what the repointing is necessary, I, I would be willing to better going to be pretty accurate. Yeah. And um, I don't know about um, what other part, Greg, maybe you know the answer to this. Uh, when you and John went through the building, what other things were you looking at aside from the brick pointing and so the sidewalk work? Is there some other component that 
is additional in the 70,000? The, um, well, I don't know about the 70,000 figure, um, but the windows, yeah. uh, the basement windows, several of those are um, broken and or rotted. Mm -hmm. and, um, they all okay. should be replaced eventually. Um, but in terms of the short run, um, if we have a budget within which to you know accomplish as much as we can, we can at least close it all up, if nothing else, so that there's no water getting in and doing more damage. That's mm. that's the main thing. I don't know whether anybody's got a price on anything to do with the windows. Okay. I think Mr. Corpett, it was just going to be looking at the brick. Yeah, the masonry. And, yeah. So it sounds like to me um, that you're the the idea is that wherever there's a possible hole in the wall, like a window or near down the basement, that those are possible water infiltration points and they all need to be shored up. I understood from some discussions that in past repairs, um, granite window sills or stone window sills were replaced with um, cement window sills that didn't have the right angles. So they were channeling water into the bricks. And so there's a lot of things that happen when, when brickwork is not handled properly. I, I've restored a few brick houses. so. Um, it's a problem that definitely needs to be addressed. And, and I don't think that necessarily if we, if we, if we come to the conclusion that we should do this in, in like a six month process where we try to do the immediate repairs for this town meeting, knowing that we're gonna have a special town meeting in the fall where we could get a lot more answers. And, and I think a lot of people, particularly Julie's committee is really focused on trying to get the budget in place. And I know there's some challenges that the town's gonna to face on the budget. And um, she doesn't need this headache at this point. And, um, but I do agree that even if we, even if we just managed to flesh out, and, and I don't know if Dietz has been giving John a lot of, uh, you know, he's been working with that company. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point, though. I was thinking that we can probably, they've done a lot of very preliminary drawings, and we might be able to get an estimate from them yeah. on what it would cost to get a real package of drawings out. Yeah, and, you know, the um, management thing. Yeah, I mean, and, so we might be able to get more information for you. Yeah, and so it's possible that in the next week, that company could come back and say, you know, to, to bring this project to fruition is going to be X. Uh, and here are the breakdowns, you know, architectural drawings, um, engineering, structural engineering, uh, project management, um, contingency, and, and just for that first phase. And if we could accomplish, because <laughs> uh, Corpita is going to give a, an estimate on that. And, um, and I'll, I'll call John tomorrow and ask him some questions about what else he's looking into and who's he looking into it with and um, see if we can firm up some rough estimates that are able to be seen. And then maybe we go for the first phase because um, you know the first phase seems to be repair and possibly the engineering design and management mm -hmm. piece. Right. And then based on that engineering management piece, we could actually get real estimates for the cost of the project. Um, right. You're yeah. not going to get a real estimate of the cost of the project until the, the architects have said, you know, this structural, this is structurally sound. We don't need to replace floor beams, et cetera. We just need to do blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Or, you know, exactly. The third floor floor is totally crap. And we have to replace it all. So um, I think that might be a better approach. And let's, uh, my suggestion would be, let's see what can be done in a week. Um, we have until like April 15th to work on this, realistically. They, there is some, drop, Julie, you may know the answer, a drop dead point on when it has to be in the town warrant, but that's usually- I, think it, I mean, I think the drop dead is, I think the final warrant has to be seven days before, right. post is seven days before town meeting. The warrant is closed 30 days before town meeting, but they put placeholders. It's like you have all the, yeah, you can have placeholders kind of. Thing. Yeah. So, I mean, in the next two weeks, we could probably get a lot more information that's meaningful 
Um, yeah. And yeah, maybe even in the next mm -hmm. week. And uh, we could revisit what was logical to present at this town meeting. Uh, okay. Because I, I'm with Alan too. I, I'm a big proponent of saving this building for various reasons because otherwise South Deerfield has no New England character, no, you know, no historical character. <coughs> and that would be a shame. So, um, Lila, you had your hand up. Yes, thanks. I, I, I think um, I, I agree with what Annalie proposed and what you're building on. I think maybe it should be laid out as three phases, but at a couple of questions. So um, is the 400,000 needed for project management, et cetera, is that something that can be in phase two or split between phase one and phase two? So in other words- I was wondering exactly that too. Is it paid like as you go along? And, right. and it seems like what we would be looking for- And how much do you need up front? Exactly. And, and we know that, um, so renovation drawings would be a part of what needs to happen um, maybe to inform the repairs, maybe not, hopefully not. But anyway, <laughs> certainly in phase one is when you literally do get the drawings, but I don't think the drawings would be 400K. So if that could be broken out and you were saying like, if we said phase one is the immediate repairs yeah, and the drawings, because the thing that in, in thinking about what Tim was saying, and it makes sense because you want to be as specific as possible and ask for the money you need when you need it um, because it builds credibility and, and helps manage the budget. But we have the other challenge, which as a committee, don't we have, I don't know if it's in our bylaws or what, we have like these, this set cycle. So I don't, we would need to do something if we wanted to bring this to a special town meeting, right? Well, Chairman's privilege here, I'm gonna put in my two cents. Yeah, please. I think that we are in the position now where Deerfield is neither a tiny town nor a big town, but we're at the point where we have to readjust our thinking about how, how active the committee is gonna be at what times of year. And I do think that um, the two phase or possibly even, even three phase approach to this would benefit the application and it would also um, give the town more specific information so they could base you know, a decision on this. Um, because uh, I, I don't understand this. This was the GRLA, I think, appraisal. And I don't understand if you go across this line that says architecture, it says the first year there's 75,000. And then in five <laughs> years, there's two, <laughs> two million. And then there's these tailing numbers. And so I don't understand what that's, what this graph means um, other than that it, at the bottom line, they're, they're saying that the total cost estimate is 4.2 million, 4.25 million. Um, so understanding this would probably answer some of our questions, but I just don't know what it means. Um, and do you have any idea, Julie? There there's a full document that is, this is pulled, like this is the executive summary little piece on the front. Yeah. So all of these numbers, it, it's probably 150 pages, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And every one of these numbers has a big long, it's exactly what, what it covers and the estimate. And it's often, you know, dollars per square foot times the square, you know, it's the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> so there is a ton of information behind this with, with, you know, estimates associated with it. That is all available. I mean, where the document is, is sitting right now is on the um, Town Building Advisory Committee page on the town website. Um, so anybody can download it and look at the full document. Um, what do you think about the, yeah. the possibility of doing this in two phases, let's call it two phases, maybe it slips to three phases, but um, you know, assuming that we're gonna have a September meeting when probably people will have more time to prepare, does that seem like a logical approach or do you think that we should not do that? 
So the reason this was all in here in one document was under the theory that this was our one shot for the whole year, right? And so we were just sort of scrambling to get it all in here. So if you all can continue to review it and we can propose something at, at the fall town meeting, then um, that would be fine. What I would really like, I'm gonna reach out to, to John Paturik and see if he can, he's been talking to Dietz or whoever it is, um, see if we can get some sort of estimate from them for a first step. Cause I, I would really like to see more in this town meeting than just the immediate repairs and the $5,000 to, to pull the RFP together. Um, I'd like to see some sort of movement on getting some drawings done. Um, but it would, I, I, I do, yeah, I was so adamant that we couldn't do anything, but John has laid a lot of groundwork and he might be able to reach out to them and they might be able to give us some sort of dollar value that would be more than our 10% of a wild guess, right? Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is kind of what it is right good, now. I think that's a good idea, Julie. And I think that's also, uh, I well, you know, for even the 75,000, I, I think it would be, safe to assume that we could legitimize uh, more than that for stabilization and, and um, repairs. <coughs> and I think that's concrete, <laughs> no pun intended, but I think that voters will uh, respond to that and realize, okay, we've got this historic building. If we had to tear it down and build a new one, it would be double 4 million or yeah. Yeah. double and a half more than 4 million. So let's get this stabilized and then uh, get, get part of that um, architectural and engineering uh, estimated in a way that could be coupled with that maybe for this town meeting. And then you've got the investment and people can see that things are happening and, um, you've, and then you can really start building the case you know, for where we are on the next steps, but you know, you all have to decide what you think is is good, but I th I think you, you I think we're all aware of the fact that there are some people in town who have long thought, well, let's just tear it down, you know. Oh yeah. And I'm expecting some of those will people will show up at town meeting, and so the you know I think yeah. you just have to anticipate. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of support for this. It's it's really an important building and has a lot of character and really says something about the town if we can do this. So I think it's very promising. I just think, yeah, maybe go back with uh, the committee or whoever you're working with and see what you can do. All right. I'm just gonna take, a, Julie, just a quick poll of the people um, uh, that are here. And I, this is what I think phase one should be, the blue stuff. You know, it, it includes the architectural what we're calling drawings here, immediate repairs. And the RFP, RFQ thing would be based on the architectural drawings. Um, yeah, yeah, or that was that for the architect. Yeah, the RFP okay. is hire the person to do the drawings. Okay, so good. That, and then the drawings that. include the RFP for the construction. Right, okay, good, excellent. That clarifies some things. So I, <coughs> I, um, <clears throat> I actually like that approach where we try to do, you know, um, speak to Dietz. Uh, I was going to ask, you know, Julie, maybe we could try to do a, a John, Julie, Tim discussion of this component, just so that at least I could share some stuff with people. We wouldn't be breaking the open meeting law or anything, but I could send something to them blind copied and, you know, we could be in next meeting, we'd be ready to We'd already have the answers to this stuff. And um, I think that's a good approach. And, and I do think that if we get the, the approval for the first phase, um, then we'll have some real numbers for the second phase. And, and I'm, <coughs> I'm really uh, thinking that we've done this before for other things where we have a second meeting and I think we handled the FISC property in a quick way, that APR. Um, as a last minute detail, but last yeah, last year was a weird town meeting. It was delayed. And so, and that's probably, I think the year before we had a something come up at the uh, special town meeting in fall, but 
that that seems like a good plan. And I also think um, once we've made this initial commitment to the architectural drawings, et cetera, it gives a certain amount of impetus and it also gives the CPC a chance to educate people that, look, this is not gonna be money that's gonna affect your real estate tax <coughs> you know, valuations. They're independent of this. And the reason why CPC exists is so projects that ordinarily would have to come out of the general fund can be funded independently without people having to worry that their taxes are gonna go way up. Um, and it's taxes know. that you're paying anyway, and right. we might as well use that money to help the town. Exactly, and and it's got a specific use, and this is this one of the specific uses. Um, so, I think that uh, it's it's a, it's a good story to tell, and I think there is a lot of support, as Alan says. So, um, let's see what we can accomplish in a week. Is that where we are, people? Ben, with me, Anna Lee, Lily, <laughs> Alan. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> Let's try to do that then. And uh, Greg, I don't know exactly um, how you got brought into this or if you've been involved in the project all along. I, what's the backstory? I'm uh, on the town building advisory committee also. Perfect, now I understand. <laughs> Excellent. So does that sound good to both of you? Yeah, it makes sense. All right. All right, um, so um, before we, let me just check. Does somebody have the application? Go ahead, Julie. What's your schedule like during the day tomorrow? I'm uh, pretty much retired, so I think okay. I'm pretty free all the time. So okay. you, I'll you email John, John and see if he's available. Yeah, okay, good. And um, you have my phone number, right? I'll send it to you. I put it at the bottom of a lot of things, but uh, I'll send it to you. And, um, yeah, and if, if Greg is free and he wants to be involved too. I mean, that's another committee that's at least informed and he's been a part of this repair process. So um, uh, if that's a good idea, then uh, maybe we can loop him in as well, but I don't know what his day's like. So, um, so all right. Um, is there anything else we need to talk with Julie and Greg about? Before I had one know? quick point to make about the timeline. Um, yeah. um, attachment number five. Um, it did not, I, I wasn't clear if the, where the rescue work is being done. It's not in the timeline. Mm. Um, so as soon as we can get it going. So. Right, as soon as you, I mean, okay. as soon as you're approved at town meeting, just if you would put that in there, because that's what you're asking the $70,000 for, but it's not in the timeline. Got it. That brings up a good point. Reading this timeline thing, um, we're talking about doing an RFP and hiring an architect, but we're not really talking about the, um, the actual expenditure of building until next year. So in some sense, according to this timeline, um, the architectural drawing is gonna be complete in January and, you know, the only thing that would play with this timeline is if we didn't uh, come up with a figure in September or October of 4 million or whatever it is for the full rehabilitation, it could go to next, next year's town meeting. Um, it's, yep. it's, it's a delay that I would rather maybe not encounter, but we'd, you know, it's, 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 it's not a problem if it slips for six months, but. Also, the um, it says January 2022, and I think you want that to be 2023. Yeah. Good catch, editor. All right. Um, well, good. So, anything, yeah, just a, yeah, any anyone who will take on a piece of this uh, contractually for, uh, you know, the actual uh, construction or work work they need to have that timeline be at least that long given the way um, things are going these days for them to be able to commit crews to do the work and find the materials and hopefully find them affordable and or maybe that you can't even use that word anymore but yeah i think that's more realistic yeah i, I think the timeline is very ambitious yeah 
Did John help you write it? Um, John and Casey and okay. um, Dave, Dave Wolfram is actually kind of the lead on the whole idea. Yeah, I know it, his name's on the application. <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm really in charge of this. I don't know how I end up defending the whole thing, but whatever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do a good job. <laughs> um, okay. Well, then I think we can let you go for tonight, and you'll. I'll send you my uh, phone number, and we'll be in touch tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, does anyone else have any final thoughts for them? Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Greg. All right. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. All right, so it's 8.07. Um, the last thing that we haven't talked about tonight is um, the seniors, and we've delayed the Ostruski APR. Ost Ostruski? I don't know how that's pronounced, but um, the Senior Housing Feasibility Study. Um, let me grab my... Or do you want me to, sh you want to share the screen and do this electronically and now that we have the papers? Would you like me to do that? I mean, I could just do speak to it briefly. Yeah. And then, and answer questions. Um, so as you all know, I am the chair of the senior housing committee and this is phase one. And in phase one, we are establishing the need and the demand and um, site feasibility. So we have two potential sites, the municipal campus that the CCI has been discussing. And um, the thought was to tear down the town hall once it's moved into the, the, new, the old grammar school as one possibility, but that's, that's one site. Another site is the um, Les Thomas gift to the town, which is known as the Brayburn land um, that he designated as being for this purpose. He having served on the senior housing committee with me 20 years ago. Wow, that's great. Yes. <laughs> ah. a good guy. Um, and so the, the um, we have spoken with um, Tom Feigenkiewicz from Sunderland, who was awesome in uh, giving us direction about who to talk to and everything. And so we have met with FERCOG. They gave us, they awarded us a technical services grant. So they will be doing the survey. Um, our committee drafted a survey based on the original survey from a while ago. And the FERCOG is taking our survey and one that they recently did for Irving, but because they have these, it'll be really fast and quick. So that is a um, survey that goes out and asks people what they want, right? And then there's another study that will be, that this is the money that we're coming to the CPC for, are the market demographics, and the site feasibilities. So we've got the market survey, which is, this is what I want. Demographics tell the builders who will be financing the project that there um, are X number of people who would be qualified to live in this um, and they have these income ranges, et cetera. And the goal is to build subsidized senior housing. And so we need to be able to also demonstrate to the Department of Housing and Community Development that there is a demographic demand as well as a um, choosing demand. So that's the other, that's the demographics and market research part of the funding that we're seeking from CPC. And then site feas feasibility is, um, going to the sites, uh, looking at water, <laughs> um, and um, so we're trying to get a sense of what would it take to develop this site and how many uh, units could be built there, about what size, uh, are you going up, are you going out, that kind, and putting together a bunch of different ideas that then you bring back to the community 
and get a sense from people what they want. So we're seeking funding. We got bids from um, through the, we've been working closely with um, Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, which thankfully call themselves HRA and uh, Rural Development Inc, RDI. And they are the group who developed the Sunderland project and they manage the development of that project. The, our hope is to follow Sunderland's path because of working with this team. What happened was they took town land and they sold it to RDI for like a dollar. RDI operates not as a nonprofit, but as doing subsidized senior housing. So they actually become taxpayers. So it would generate tax revenues to the town. And the um, town of Sunderland was able to fund it from out of their pocket for like, I think it was $375,000. So that the $500,000 that we set aside last year designated specifically for senior housing it is our earnest hope and belief that that will be sufficient to achieve this project. Yeah, I Was think it's great. great. <laughs> I, I think you've got the, the strong things about this is that the, the money you're asking for is modest. You've already shown that you have a FERCOG investment involved. You've got the 500,000 that was approved um, and and, and you know, emphasize the senior housing aspect of it. And I think even uh, you know, mentioning as you do in the proposal that there is a possibility of priority for Deerfield residents, yes. um, right? And I think you know, keeping it straightforward and, and um, highlighting these things, it's, it's a, I think it just can't, I can't imagine it not being easy to take a vote on and move on. I like your attitude. <laughs> Anna Lee, what do you think? I'm on the committee, so. Um, oh, well, you can talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think Lily uh, synopsized it well. And um, yeah, very hopeful that uh, this can move forward. Ben, you're not on that committee, are you? I'm not on that committee, no. <laughs> um, but I think, it, I think it sounds like a really, really well-formed um, well-aimed proposal. And, uh, you know, you've obviously done much more work on the details than I have, Lily, and um, the organizations you're working with have a proven track record. So I think it really ought to be a sell to town meeting. And since we're all part of the demographic, or maybe not me, but... <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions about the proposal. Um, the Sunderland project that RDI did, it says 33 units due to open this year. Mm -hmm. Did RDI give you any sense of like, what is the tax benefit to Sunderland potentially going to be? No, no. Um, and that it sort of came up from a different direction because I had said something like, oh, I assume since you are a nonprofit, RDI is, that then there are, you know, that you operate as a nonprofit. They said, oh no, it, this is taxable. So I know I do not know the answer to that, but, um, and we probably won't know by town meeting either because I believe they're, um, they're starting their lottery work now. And um, that's- Can you explain like, that? All right, so I just happened to attend a webinar yesterday <laughs> um, from the state that in order to do preference for locals, you, you, you hold a lottery and it's, I think it's because it's subsidized housing, but you can do preference for locals. You have to have a lottery agent who is a certified lottery agent. So there are, <clears throat> looking down the, the pike, there are complexities to this whole thing that I am really very much looking forward to RDI handling, but being very clear that we want um, Deerfield residents to get preference. My understanding is that um, you can do up to 70% of, um, hang on, I actually have my notes, but it's something like you need to be a current resident in town, have children or have children in the school system, 
or, or uh, family members in the school system. I mean, um, there's like three different ways that you can do it or have children who live in town sort of a thing. But the idea being that if you used to live here and you still have roots here, like family members, you know, that you can still um, get that preference because maybe you moved out because you couldn't live here and you get to move back. And the 30% would be people from just in the state. Has to be open, yeah. 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 And, <clears throat> okay, so. It still be pretty local. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because the older people that live in the Franklin County or South County, right. they want to stay here, and uh, this is an option for them to, to do so. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and. Uh, I think this looks interesting. I, I, I think that based on Deerfield now, that when we mention friendly 40B, there's going to be a certain small contingent of loud vocal people are going to say it's a scam. Um, so, but that's neither here nor there. And the fact that it's got a tax generating component is a great thing. And um, you know Braeburn better than I do, but I understand that one of the obstacles, of course, is Braeburn Road itself. And there's no access on the backside of the property, is there? And no hope of access on the backside of the property? No, not to my knowledge. I think Carolyn said at one point there was a potential for an access onto, isn't it Grave Street? So in other words, it would, it would be an angle to come back behind um, on Grave Street. That there might be there might be a right of way passability, but I think it would it would require it, it would probably require um, purchase purchase of some some land or an easement or yeah because there's, domain open, or... there's a fair amount of open space back there and there's some houses that are not real close together and there might be some possibility of of that. Would, but, the, feasibil um, would the feasibility study examine that thing that yeah. idea? Yes. Yeah, okay. because it is some. It's not feasible if you can't get to it, right? right. Uh, and right. and also considering that it's for senior housing, you need to be able to have emergency vehicles. Right, right. that's the key. Yeah, and you would need that regardless, right? Fire right. trucks, etc. Right. Whenever you do that, and a, and a turnaround component. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that um, I think I agree with everyone else. I think uh, the logic of it is compelling and. Um, it's a small amount of money and we have a fair amount of money set aside. So, um, and the way that this typically works is that if we, if the town approves this, then um, Brenda Hill usually takes the 10% um, the allocation and uses the new money and leaves the old money in the bank. So you're not depleting the old money. Um, so, what is the new money for senior how or affordable? Ten percent. Ten percent. So what the value is though this year? I uh, I don't know if she's been calculating the ten percent on the estimated total receipts, and I'm not sure that that's accurate. So at a minimum, it's twenty. It's about twenty five thousand dollars. So we will barely. I mean, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, we might be able just to get away with this year's allocation then. Potentially, and if we if we need to to to, um, to take some out of this year's um, you know funding, right. then you know six thousand dollars or whatever it is, or five thousand, it's it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, so I think I, we I feel. Think I, no, sorry. Go ahead, Alan. I, I I'm sorry. I I didn't mean to interrupt, but I did. <laughs> uh, I was just going to. Uh, say that, yeah, don't get into the weeds on the presentation with this much, because I think it's really pretty, you know, I think that just the, uh, the, the rationale, the fact that you've got some uh, already some uh, the funds lined up and that um, it's gonna help our seniors. That's, that's right there. Stay close to home and their families. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so do we need, do, have we all looked at this application? And if so, are there things that we feel are still deficient? I took a fair amount, number of notes, but I didn't see anything. Um, I, I thought it was very, very straightforward and clear. Got a good narrative. 
Yeah, good narrative. I, I, I didn't see anything deficient. <laughs> the one, the one I, yeah, the one I was worried about was the was the town common one because I couldn't even. It took me ten minutes even to figure out how to read it um, because it was you know on the backs of things and but so I was very relieved to hear tonight that that's not the one that's uh, the current uh, the current model. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, having been through those meetings with the town common, it was very hard to maintain focus. Is that right? Yeah. There, there's an incredible number of jurisdictions and motivations and um, potential distractions, and we and Kate did a really good job of making sure, and Trevor too, that we. Yeah, it, it, held, it, it held together pretty well once I figured out how to read it, and uh, mm -hmm. and so on. But uh, and we yeah. we understand that nothing will please everyone. But um, we really strongly believe that a more attractive and safer oh, yeah. uh, town common will be good for the town in so many respects, it, it can't be added up. That's right. Yeah, the safety factor is a big thing for, for me. I think hmm. the logic of the sidewalks is so illogical as they exist today. That, right now, it's frightening. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people <laughs> yeah, try get on a regular basis. Well, as Trevor pointed out, they go to buildings that aren't there anymore. Right. Uh -huh. So, well, um, it sounds like this one we feel comfortable with. So, does right. someone want to make a motion to to recommend this or? Ben? I move that we approve uh, the forwarding of this application to the town meeting, if that's the procedure, uh, with the approval of uh, our committee. Use the word recommend. I recommend to recommend this to town meeting. I Okay, I move that we recommend this application for consideration by town meeting. Is there a second? Okay. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will call a vote. Lily Dwight. I think I need to abstain. Anna Lee. I also abstain. Uh, Alan Sweetland. Aye. Ben Benson. Aye. Tim Hilchey. Aye. It uh, carries 302. Is that how it goes? Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, before we feel like we're free, I just want to ask a couple of questions about we've delayed action on um, the APR. Now, Alan, I just want to get your what do we need to do between now and the next meeting to to fix what we need to fix? Well, personally, I, I don't think that he, sh uh, that Chet himself should be the one that is submitting Sponsor. it. Um, yeah. And it would be much better if it was somebody involved in the APR program. I mean, it, uh, it could be somebody else too. I mean, that's one of the reasons why the land trusts were always good for this because they could be a third party uh, supporter and assist in uh, getting getting the APR funding, but I I'm not sure that it's I'm not I I just don't think that even for CPA an individual can be receiving and especially if it's money that's going to that person's property. Yeah, let me look at um, the so, full disclosure here. This was all done correctly by the state. Yeah, and when it got to the the town administration portion of it, the ball got dropped. Yeah, and on Febru February 28th, I wrote this quickly based on last year's Fisk property so that it would be in by the deadline so we didn't have to do any special meeting Nishigas. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna pull up the Fisk application and share it just so we can look at it. And um, see who, it, it looks like it was Pam Fisk who. She's a contact person. Yes. Submitting application, name and address of person submitting application. And and, and to talking about the co co holding, there's mm. no there's no co holding of the of the preservation restriction. The state holds the preservation restriction, or they grant it to an authority like a land trust. Like that's that's one of the things the land trusts do a lot is is they, they hold the, the uh, conservation restrictions. 
because if it's the individuals whose land it's on, it's much more difficult to have stu uh, reliable stewardship and oversight and um, to make sure that the landowner doesn't make some kind of changes. So wait, Tim, can you go back for a second? Because that will stop right around here. So I don't know about this co-holding. I, I don't, I, you really yeah, don't. I mean, really like, I, like I told you, Alan, I wrote this based on a document that I didn't know the answer to either. I know that yeah, we right. approved this, but. No, I, I'm not faulting you. No, I understand. Obviously. Ideally what, uh, you know, I think the best thing would possibly be, I mean, for that matter, the town could hold the, but we, we don't have the personnel to, you know, these, these um, preservation restrictions have to have a review and a uh, monitoring process to make sure that um, there, there are no violations to the restriction. And um, so I think if the Commonwealth, if the APR program is willing to hold the restriction, that's great. But uh, so Tim, can you keep scrolling a little bit? Because th so there is Michelle P the Padula, oh. the regional planner, the same person on on the on Chet Ostrovsky's. Right. Okay. I would have Casey contact her and say, who's actually going to hold this restriction? And okay, and um, is anyone on a land trust anywhere? I'm not on anymore. I mean, I okay. still, you know, have contact with the Franklin Land Trust, but if they're not invited by the town or by the owner or by the, the uh, APR program, you know, they, won't, they don't want to take it on probably because they usually get a fee. Uh, modest fee, but uh, if they're gonna take on the stewardship, they have to pay somebody to, to take on that work. And I don't think they wanna hold, uh, to be the, you know, they, they, don't, they wouldn't wanna be the applicant or be involved if they don't have a vested uh, interest in the APR. Yeah, I, I, I mean, basically the, as far as I can see, the interest the Franklin Land Trust might have would be somebody else is paying for this and yeah we're just going to make sure it's administered properly and we're not going to be spending any money that we could be buying land for preservation out of our fund right. so well, and, and often oftentimes apr was you know that's what would happen would be that they would begin negotiations involving a land trust because the land trust did a lot of the administrative stuff like <laughs> what uh, you were having to do um, in this process mm -hmm. uh, and taking care of those things locally. So do you think, um, do you think then I should? Uh... Well, I hate to put that on you. I think, uh, you know, by rights, of course, I don't know. I mean, you, you're trusting Casey or-, or, or Yeah, Jennifer. Casey, I've given her two assignments in the last couple of days and I, I don't want to give her any more because I mean she's so busy and yeah, you know, yeah. she sent me a, a, an email before this meeting saying do I have to be there tonight <laughs> I said because uh, she she needs a night off now and again well, um so but what I would just want to be clear about is you think that we should reach out to Padula yes and possibly the Franklin Land Trust and and Casey and say who's going to hold this restriction yes is it and be who is the applicant um you know, who's asking for the money and, and it shouldn't be Chodostrowski. It should be, the, the town could even be doing it because what right. basically all we're, it's a, it's a great deal. I mean, for $11,000, the town oh, yeah. preserving a really important piece of farmland that's got other farmland uh, in, in ag preservation uh, around it. So, yep. so, <clears throat> so I have a question. Um, it, it, I'm looking at looking at the Fisk one. It does. It says. It, it says a contribution from the town. Can you sc keep scrolling, Tim? Because it it or is that it? Yeah. From this? Because we this is what we promoted and was accepted last year. Um, Tim. All possible. The recordable survey of the ATF property. Okay. So they they execute an APR contract. Who do they execute it with? Presumably the state. Isn't that the question that you're asking, Alan? Who is the APR contract with? Yeah, it, it's it's it is between the the landowner and the 
and the APR program, but it's the matter of some party and it could be a, th it can be a third party like a land trust or the town could hold it, but you, I don't think the town wants to get involved in that. Yeah. And it's not really a, yeah, something you want to have be in a co-holding situation. Um, it's, yeah, I'm just scrolling to see if there's any further. Yeah, clarity. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Michelle Padula didn't want to be writing this application, um, but right. she did all of the things that the state APR program has to do, like providing pictures and. Right. Well, know. once I realized there was all of this uh, additional information, I was a little bit relieved because I thought that somehow it had just been a. It was just a case of um, the stuff that I sent to the town uh, office not getting distributed. And I will um, go in and find the email and forward it to everyone that has all of these pictures and everything. Yeah, okay. Now there's, this may be just the boilerplate. Um, yeah. And there may be no, nothing more meaningful in here. Sorry, okay. Cool. Oh, this is, yeah, this is. This is, doesn't have anything to do with this. Okay. I'm gonna. Hmm. So we, but the basic question is, who's gonna hold the restriction? Yeah. Okay. And it may be that the contact person, even though this says contact person, um, I don't think it says um, who the who the who's gonna hold the restriction. It just says create co hold. And the implication is that the state APR program and some other entity, but potentially some other entity, yeah. Yeah, we got to nail that down and figure out. Yeah. If APR is just providing the money yeah. and it's the restriction is going to be held somewhere. Yeah. Um, that's I, don't, I, I can't remember, uh, Tim, but in other words, that, that $11,000 does come to Ostrowski in some right. form. But I don't, it's not a matter of uh, Brenda writing him a check, I don't think. I think it comes from the CPA. Yeah, come, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, whoever writes the checks for the town is going to take CPA money and maybe they'll send it to the state and That's the state right. it might, write it one might, check. It might need to pass through the state or it may just go, be able to go directly, but I don't, yeah. I never was involved in that. All right, so the question I have to ask is who's going to hold a restriction? Yeah. And we and, don't have to worry and, about the accounting. And who is the applicant? Right. Um, um, because it should be, it shouldn't be the landowner. Yeah, I'm curious why why you say that, Alan. I just don't understand. Why shouldn't it be the landowner? Well, um, because it, 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 it this has come up in a couple of other um, applications in the past is that the town really shouldn't be in the business of, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is provide some matching funds for, for ag preservation in this case. Mm -hmm. But um, it really should be going to some kind of recognized entity rather than the sort of appearance of the fact that uh, the town is just writing a check directly to Chad Ostrowski and who's monitoring that. And, and so you, so you want to know who holds the restriction because there is requirements for stewardship. And Ideally, you want to know how that money is going from Brenda's office to uh, Chet, but not. I I might be wrong. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I just I'm just I just was curious because it sounds like when I read the thing um, for you know the Fisk um, yeah. property and Chet's the same deal is like there's a gap between. Um, the value of the land and what the APR program is going to um, compensate them. And they come to some sort of concept of like, well, that's fine. I will do it for less if I can get $10,000 more or whatever. And that sounds what well, it's like. There is some negotiation always, but yeah, basically what it is is that an appraiser tells you what your development rights are on a property. Ah, okay. A farm, piece of farmland. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to get into this too much because it's late, but so the, so, the, so the state hires an appraiser and says, the farmer would have to pay this amount of money to develop it for 
housing, for example. And um, so the value of the keep, keeping it in farmland is a formula involving the investment of the farm, uh, the landowner, and the value of the land by a, a, a unbiased uh, appraiser. So okay. So here's here's what the appraiser for the Fisk property did. Okay. They said market value before. Mm -hmm. 27,000 an acre. Right. Yeah. Market value after 70,000 and APR value 130,000. Right. Right. And this was under a different program. So the state was looking for a 10%. Oh, magic. that's what it was. Yeah. They were looking for the state. So one. It sounds almost like the APR program is the one that's trying to tap our CPC for money. Yeah. So yeah, that they want they want to see that the town is willing to put some skin exactly. in. Exactly. They they require they don't rec I mean it's it's varied over the years, but they they I think isn't don't they want a 5% match for Well, this is a different program that this one's under and it's yeah. 5% because it either considering it prime soil or something. I don't know. There's something happened between last year and this year so that they can only ask for a 5% match. Well, that's they're always to our credit. I mean, that's a good thing yeah. about APRs. They usually don't ask for more than 5% from the town, but they just want a little bit of a good faith uh, endorsement for, for the project. So that's what it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, I got to tell you guys, my property is right next to Chet's. <laughs> so oh, you you are too. Oh yeah, I abut next to the Fisk and the Chet's. And yeah, well, I'm not. I'm actually not right next to the Fisk. I'm I'm right after. I'm right next to Chet and right. um, Jay Savage. So I really, I mean, I'm seriously thinking I should APR mine because then it would protect the whole watershed, which I would love to do. But <laughs> that's a conversation for another day. And now I'll know how to do it. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it enhances your property value. If you have a house on, you know, you, which I, presumably you do, mm -hmm. your house value is uh, tends to go up quite a bit if you, because people know it's I'm surrounded you, by APR. I'm going to let Annalise speak. She's got her hand up. She's being polite. Sorry, yeah. Emily. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I just want to clarify why this came before the select board last night. Was that for their letter of endorsement or was there for? Yes. That was the reason. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so just to clarify, I'm gonna find out who is the applicant supposed yep. to be and who's gonna hold the restriction. Yep, perfect. And um, so one other thing I can do and sort of to try and figure this out is I can ask Brenda Hill where did the check for the Fisk property go? Did it go to the state or did it go to? Great the, idea. Yeah, perfect. And, that, would, that would close the loop. Okay. Okay, are we done now? I believe so. If, if you when think. Our, when is our next? So, um, the your application is supposed to be on the 17th, but it sounds to me like you're saying our next meeting is next Thursday. Yeah, I mean, what's the app? The let's find the application form. Um, and look inside. And that boilerplate that. Yeah, it, the stuff. I've got so many files inside my CPA folder now that, uh, yeah, I know it almost makes you wish for the days of <laughs> the Excuse cemetery, me. right? <laughs> um, yeah. while I'm doing this also, also, I did anybody else have trouble signing in tonight? No, because when, when I did it, um, it said, uh, the, the, um, Lily Dwight is wait is, is you're waiting for the host to open the meeting. Oh, you were probably clicking on the link from last. 
meeting when I hosted it instead of on the agenda meeting link. That makes yeah. sense. That sounds like exactly what the problem was. Right. Interesting because I took it off the town website um, from this this uh, meeting's agenda. This mm. one or last one? Because uh, um, I can I got in by using what was on this meeting's agenda, so it worked for me. Yeah, so I must have picked, clicked on a, the previous meeting's yeah. agenda. Yeah. Okay. That would make that, sense. That, okay. that explains it. Because then I was putting in music heels and all sorts of efforts to get there, and I just couldn't do it. Oh. All right, so I'm going to call up this, this application form, and it says that there's March 31 is the next meeting that's scheduled, and it's supposedly final recommendations. Okay. Um, yeah. But we may need to have an April 7 meeting um, or an April 14 meeting. I. But uh, well, so, are you thinking Mark to this next week? We don't. We're not having a meeting. I think that that's correct, and I think that's good for you, right, Lily? Yeah, that a senior housing would appreciate because we keep giving up our day, and I think also it might be helpful for Kate and Julie, both of whom we asked to, you know, right. it, do more work on it. I think that to give them an extra week would be a kindness. Yep. So yeah, when, you're right about when that. Is our, when is our next meeting then? March 31st. Okay. Same time? 6.30, yes. Same place? Okay. Virtual? Okay. Um, that's a question. It, what advantage is there to meeting in person? <laughs> None. None. I think we get more people than when we do it on Zoom, frankly. Yeah. I think it's easier for the viewing public too, if they go in and they want to look at our meeting, they can actually see stuff. And I, we could encourage yeah. Chuck to know that it's a little more convenient for him because he always has trouble getting to our meetings, even though he's very definitely a, a good member of the committee. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I will follow up with these things. Um, so the things we have left to discuss are Town Common, um, the grammar school and the APR and the other ones we're okay with, we've, we've recommended them. And um, I will send a note to everyone saying the next meeting is gonna be on March 31st at 6.30. Is that and a, I forgot to look and see what not day. For you. What day You're gonna be gone. It's a Thursday. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna be in California but I may be able to zoom in. Yeah, um, if we don't have five people, we can't have a meeting. I, I'll be in the air. <laughs> Flying. Oh, really. um, let me get back to you. I, I'm going to have to check and see. Okay, so I'm not going to send out a thing about when the meeting is. You yeah. want to try for the 24th? What is the Who, Who's leaving right? when? I, I'm available on the 24th. I'm still here in town. What about you, Annalee? Yeah, I'll be on the West Coast, but I could do it. Oh, you'll be flying back on the 31st? Correct, but I'll be on, yeah, but I'll be on the West Coast on the 24th, but I could do it. Um, so 3.30 in the afternoon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, the 24th sounds like. Yeah, that no, would be better for if we me. Can, if, if we can get Chuck to come, then we can let Annalee off the hook. Right, yeah. And it still gives an extra week for the town common in the uh, grammar school. So that, yeah. that's more time than they expected. Yeah, I think that's a good, good deal. So then we'll, we'll say that we're going to meet on the 24th? Yes. OK. Yeah. And that way I'll get to, we'll do senior housing on the 31st, Annalee. <laughs> you, you might miss that one, clearly. But <laughs> all right. Yeah. So um, if there's no other discussion, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, Alex, you can <laughs> stop recording.